This meeting is being recorded. Hello, am I audible? <clears throat> yes, Kushar. Sure. Right. You can start. So, good evening, everyone. I welcome formally everyone here for the first session of the year 2022 in January with a very warm wishes of a happy new year. So, to begin with, it is a small introduction about our Friends of Elephant event. <clears throat> our Friends of Elephant event is, is not an organization, but it's an not proposing to be one, it is an informal group of people coming together with varied expertise concerned about elephants and other wildlife. The group is a forum for disseminating knowledge linked to elephants and other wildlife science, conservation and welfare through art, science, culture, literature, movies, talks and panel discussions. Mm -hmm. Our expectation is that people who have attended our events can Detected offline before and in present online mode, help in exchange of knowledge on conservation and welfare of wildlife, including elephants. So this session is scheduled as so. First, it will be a talk with the title Elephants and People, a very interesting one indeed. Uh, with the sorry, Kushan, uh, can you just uh, align to the right slide? We are just seeing the only the first slide. Sorry, sorry for the inconvenience, just a moment. <clears throat> is it okay now, uh, Naveen? No, the slide is not changing. To share the presentation and just go to the right slide. Is it now working, Navin? No, I mean, we're not able to see the slide. Yes, now, yeah. You can just change it to the schedule slide. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for the little technical inconvenience. So this is the schedule for the days. So it beginning with a talk 
on elephants and peoples which is a parallel running through our past 6 7 meetings where we have spoken about elephants and other animals like leopards crocodiles monkeys and today it's very interesting because we are talking people as one of the species or human as a species by Dr. Uh, Dr. Prachim Mehta Jayant Kulakarni and Mr. Ravi Elapur this will be followed by a conversation with Mr. Sharath and all the other speakers on managing humans and elephants with the support of forest department and local communities in north canara district and in the end it will be a question and answer session with all the moderators moderated by sanjay ajnekar so the talk elephants and people by mr jayant kulakarni dr prachim hetha and mr ravi elapur it's my pleasure and honor to introduce mr jayant kulakarni one of the speakers he has a btech and an mtech degree in chemical engineering from iit mumbai to pursue his interest in wildlife and nature he joined the indian forest service ifs he served as an ifs officer in maharashtra and was posted in melga tiger reserve he is a silver medalist in wildlife management from wildlife institute of india dehradun he took early retirement from ifs to work for nature conservation from the ngo sector he is executive director of conservation programs in wildlife research and conservation society his main interest is participatory nature conservation he is particularly interested in conservation of private forests and sustainable forest management as a conservation tool he is a keen bird watcher photographer and trekker sir i welcome you for the talk thank you thank you very much as the another speaker of the day is dr prachi mehta Prachi Mehta is a wildlife scientist and director, researcher, wildlife researcher and conservation society. She completed her PhD in wildlife science from the Wildlife Institute of India. She studied bird community and their response to forest practices for her doctoral thesis. Prachi Mehta is interested in learning about ecological questions and processes. Apart from working on elephants and people, Prachi has also studied large mammal population monitoring. giant squirrel distribution and ecology of forest owlet and other owls in central india dr prachimeta i welcome you for the talk thank you very much navin yeah thank you <clears throat> and another speaker of the day is mr ravi ellapur mr ravi ellapur is a program officer wildlife research and conservation society he has diploma in agriculture from december 2013 he is working with horticultural department of uttara kannada karnataka government to educate the farmers regarding their agricultural practices from 2013 to 15 he worked with roots it for implementing karnataka government education department's project in uttara kannada udupi and south kannada since 2015 ravi is working with wildlife research and conservation society as program manager in implementing community based conflict management program in three forest divisions that is elapur haliyal and kali tiger reserve uh, mr ravi elapur i welcome you to the talk so i just hand over the session to the speakers without any ado so sir please take over i shall yeah thank you kushal good evening everybody so uh, and thanks to friends of elephants for uh, organizing this wonderful program event uh, and allowing us to you know talk to the people uh, present here uh, i can see the large number of participants and i i could see dr ejt john singh a well known expert on elephants is here so it's a pleasure to be here today right so i'll uh, so without wasting any time let me start by uh, giving starting the presentation uh, uh, is my screen visible kushal yes sir it's visible okay okay great right so uh, <clears throat> so this is about ele elephants and people uh, managing humans and elephants with the support of forest department and local communities in north canara district so i am jayan kulkarni speaking on behalf of wildlife research and conservation society uh so this uh 
Okay, so uh, this project of ours, it's uh, in the northernmost range of uh, elephants uh, in uh, in the Western Ghats. Uh, it's in the state of Uttar Kannada in Karnataka. So this is briefly some a little bit of history about uh, this area where we are working. Uh, here on the you can see the map of uh, Uttar Kannada district. Uh, on the on the left hand side uh, is the uh, the situation where how it existed. From 1870 to 1920, we know this from a publication by uh, Dr. Nair and the Professor Madhav Gadgil. So you, you can see that there was fairly good distribution of elephants in the area. Uh, they were and they have recorded that there are about five groups of elephants which are uh, moving about in the area. And then later on, there was a construction of a major dam project there uh, up to 1980, and uh, it caused a, a large influx of people over there there was some tree felling and there might have been possible other uh, disturbances because of which there was a crash in the elephant population uh, and from five groups it became two groups of elephants uh, and uh, but, uh, also around the same time uh, you know the, the like i said this is a northernmost population of elephants in uh, western ghats uh, the elephants used to move uh, here from the mysore population to the north kannada population uh, but uh, in between in the 1960s, there was the construction of the Lingamaki Dam, and this apparently blocked the movement of uh, elephants uh, from the southern population, due to which the population of elephants in Uttar Kannada got isolated from the southern population. So now, right now, it, it's an isolated population, right? But uh, afterwards, because of the conservation efforts, this population has rebounded to a great extent, and now we have. Uh, uh, but uh, it did not, it has yet not gone all the way south where it was there in the earlier Pokshapu held of Honavar, but it uh, extends to the northernmost part, part of Sirsi, uh, which you can see in the, uh, on the map. So this is the current uh, situation. There are about uh, 50 plus elephants uh, in this landscape. And this is something, uh, a quick review, I mean, it's a slightly confusing map. Uh, but if you can see the, uh, you can see over here is where uh, Dandeli, where our uh, uh, elephant population is located. And it was mainly uh, uh, restricted to this area uh, around uh, Dandeli, Yelapur, Halyal. But uh, around 1990s, the population started moving northwards. So from here, from it moved into Belgam district. And from there, uh, you know, Belgam, Khanapur, it went up to the Maharashtra border. And then around 2000 year, it, uh, the elephants uh, 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 went into Maharashtra. And this was, that was the first time in the recent times that the elephants were seen in Maharashtra. And, there was, uh, uh, and they have stayed there since then in Kolapur and Sindhudur district. So now this elephant population, which was there uh, around, centered around Dandeli, which is now, now also known as Kali Tiger Reserve. Now it has spread uh, to uh, uh, all the way up to uh, Maharashtra. But it is thinly distributed. The center still rema remains around uh, Dandeli, Yelapur and Haryana. So this is about the uh, project area where we are working. Uh, uh, this, like you, like I said, it's the it's the uh, Dandeli Anshi Tiger Reserve, which is now known as the Kali Tiger Reserve. Uh, and we are talking in terms of the forest divisions within North Canada. There are many forest divisions. The elephant uh, uh, po population and the project where which we are doing, it is in uh, the three divisions, northernmost divisions. That is Kali Tiger Reserve, Yelapur Division, and Haliyar Division. Right, so this is the North Canada landscape. So I talk. So let me introduce the, what uh, about, a little bit about the background of the project. We, we started this project in the year 2009, and the intention was to uh, because being the northernmost population and also adjacent to uh, uh, state of Maharashtra from where uh, where our NGO is based. So we wanted to study the situation here, uh, you know, uh, with relative, uh, relation to uh, human elephant conflict. And which was the motivation why we started over here, right? So this you can see the North Canada landscape. Uh, it's a very uh, uh, pleasant and beautiful landscape where the villages are interspersed with forest. In the background you can see the teak forest, and in the foreground you can see the uh, villages. Uh, the villages grow mainly paddy during the rainy season, uh, and when it's harvested, more there's mostly not much crop uh, in this area. And there are some people who also grow plantations. Some farmers have plantations of coconut and arecanut. And in some regions, there is also cultivation of sugarcane recently. Over the last 
10 to 15 years, sugarcane cultivation has also started. This is, a, this is a kind of forest which exists over here, uh, mainly teak plantation in most of the areas. Right? And uh, yeah, this is a view of the uh, an araconite plantation. So uh, we started this project over here in 2009. Uh, you can see here the, how the elephant population in this uh, place is, uh, in this uh, landscape is uh, distributed. In the center, you can see Kali Tigerism. So during the uh, 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 late summer and in the rainy season, the elephants are centered around Kali Tigerism. Uh, and as uh, the, the uh, uh, plantation of crops, especially the rice plantation, it takes place in the, at the beginning of the monsoon, around June. Uh, and as the rice crops start growing in the month of August and September, the elephants start moving out for uh, you know, uh, feeding on the uh, crops. And that is when the, actually the uh, conflict starts, what we know as the human elephant conflict. And they uh, come out, they, they go all the way uh, in the south, they go up to the uh, uh, place called Katur, which is there on the uh, border with uh, Haveri district. Uh, in the uh, uh, west, they go up to the uh, border of Dharwad. And in the north, they go up to the border of Belgaum. So, and they stay there, they feed on the crops uh, up to the month of February, uh, January to February, uh, and causing a lot of conflict with the farmers there. And then around February, then they start moving back and then they go back to Kali Tigerism. So that is how the uh, situation exists. And uh, uh, our, uh, this project, it, it is uh, mainly about, uh, you know, mitigation of crop damage or control of crop damage by elephants. So uh, human elephant conflict has different uh, connotations, different aspects. So here we are working mainly on crop damage, uh, crop damage, and fortunately there's there are uh, hardly any cases of you know uh, 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 human injuries or deaths for even elephant poaching is extremely rare in this area, fortunately. But nevertheless, uh, crop damage is uh, definitely a problem over here, and that is a, uh, a problem that we are working on through this project. Right, so this is uh, seen how how the uh, uh, field looks after elephants have visited there, and uh, uh, wherever elephants go, they trample on the rice crops, they uh, feed on the rice crops, and uh, any other kind of crops. And so they cause a lot of damage to sugarcane also. And that uh, wherever these elephants have gone, the crop is more or less permanently damaged, and it causes a lot of uh, uh, problem to the farmers. And there, there are various strategies for uh, control of uh, elephants uh, to prevent them from entering human habitations, to prevent them from entering uh, agricultural fields. So I'll just discuss this very briefly. So uh, the, uh, the forest department, as you know, is the agency which is responsible for uh, looking up managing elephants, managing all wildlife, in fact. And they, um, various kinds of strategies are tried by the forest department, by the people also. So one of the strategies which is sometimes adopted is to try to contain elephants inside the uh, forest area. But elephants are very difficult to uh, you know, uh, enclose or keep in a small area. And especially, so what is sometimes done is uh, create a barrier or a fencing around a forest block where the elephants are uh, residing and try to contain them inside the forest block. But as uh, we all know, elephants are large landscape animals and they uh, require a huge amount of area for their lifestyle, you know, for feeding, for moving around. Uh, so th their uh, home range can be as much as 500 or even 1000 square kilometers in some cases. So it's very difficult to contain them in a small area. So these kinds of attempts often fail to contain the elephants and they are often su unsuccessful. Elephants manage to find a way out. They, they breach the uh, fencing or the uh, elephant poop trenches and move out and uh, you know, move into the habitation, feed on the agriculture crops, etc. So these are these such effects are uh, you know, efforts are often futile. Another some strategy sometimes carried out is to try to block the movement of ele elephants from one place to another. Uh, firstly, it's not a very sound strategy because elephants one needs to have migration of elephants for uh, you know maintaining the genetic diversity of elephants. Firstly, and secondly, it's really difficult to stop an elephant by putting up an elephant proof trench or a fencing or something like that. Because the elephant is bound to find a way uh, to you know, breach through that area. There are roads crossing there. There are streams. Somewhere or the other, there's a gap and elephants do tend to move across. But what happens is that unnecessarily in the process, there is a lot of uh, conflict uh, with elephants. 
in the uh, in the process of trying to stop the movement of elephants the third strategy is uh, the strategy where which we believe is the best strategy to uh, adopt where you uh, where there are elephants you know you try to protect the villages the try to pro, uh, the protect the agricultural crops so let the move, uh, elephant move ar around but uh, but you try to uh, uh, protect the villages try to protect the agricultural crops so no damage takes place and this is this we found is the best strategy and which is the strategy that we try to adopt in our project right so this is some of the uh, you know uh, examples of how elephant can find their way across uh, elephant proof trenches uh, you can see elephants i mean you, one would not expect that such a big heavy animal would be able to climb in and out of elephant trenches but they managed to find a way and uh, there are so many uh, you know videos and uh, photographs of you know mothers pushing their calves in and out of elephant proof trenches this is a, a, a video which was captured in our study area where an elephant I, i hope the video is visible so this is an elephant which is which has been blocked by an elephant to a proof trench it is trying to move across and well it found its way you know somehow it uh, though it seems to have quite a long uh, gap but it managed to find, find its way across this gap so these are what we call as engineering solutions you know so uh, like elephant proof trenches uh a, a solar uh, you know solar electric fencing which is which gives us shock to the elephants uh, so to prevent them from you know uh, going uh, crossing that particular boundary but elephants uh, you know put branches onto these uh, the electric fencing and uh, they uh, you know uh, break the electric circuit and they manage to cross so right so what uh, we are mm -hmm. trying to do we are uh, in this project we try to work with the community you know, so what we call is a cbcm or uh, co uh, community based conflict management so it's a participatory model of conflict management uh, and it depends upon empowering uh, empowering farmers in crop protection and we try to use low cost and low technology methods to and we try to revive the traditional crop protection practices so the basis is basically about making uh, the farmers themselves uh, partners in trying to uh, reduce crop damage and uh, prevent human elephant conflict right so what we start with if we uh, st start with uh, uh, uh whenever we go to a village we start with what is the participatory rural uh, uh, appraisal exercise or pri exercise as it is common, commonly known with the help of the community we make a map of the village right and we try to uh, we ask them wh where do the elephants come from which is the season uh, when they come uh you know what are the types of crops it damages which are the entry points especially what we try to find out which are the entry point where do the elephants come to the village and we have found that whenever an elephant uh, comes into a village it has some preferences they they have certain entry points where they prefer to come inside from there might be three four such entry points in the village so we try to identify these uh, entry points and we try to block these entry points so once you block them elephants often you know Uh, uh don't try don't enter into the village and prefer to go somewhere else and then your village is protected so these are just some pictures which you do of the uh, pr exercise and working in the community right so uh yeah so what it's all about what a pra uh, technique is what i already explained this and we also try to plan with the villagers you know so it's a uh, villager it's try to uh, involve uh, the pr exercise also helps to involve the villagers in protecting so we pane rokhe dobe seti part padebe ajo ta ta no mobile de to we actually try to get them to plan you know suppose elephant uh, enters into village we will take responsibility for uh, you know uh, uh, driving of the elephants so we, uh, we, we uh, and who will be responsible for taking certain action maybe you know getting hope of a uh, uh, hold of a flashlight Uh, and trying to rouse the people, etc. So all these kinds of planning is done during the PR exercise, right? And these are the kind of then uh, now we have a lot of technology. We have these uh, Google Maps. We try to, uh, with the help uh, of the information gained during the uh, PR exercise, we try to make these more more detailed maps uh, where we give the uh, you know uh, we draw the boundary of the village, the forest, and where the elephants are likely to enter from. All these points uh, information is marked on, on these maps. So this is for a village named Attangi, then Gunjawati. So we did in each of these villages we did the exercise and mark the entry points of the villages. 
right so then we actually what are the kind of uh, you know techniques that we use uh, for uh, uh, pro uh, crop protection so we depend a lot on the fa uh, farmers implementing these techniques and night guarding is one of the uh, things that we insist on uh, that farmers have to uh, protect their crops and we have found that uh, you know presence of human beings or presence of people is the best way of keeping away elephants and then we depend on number of uh, other uh, techniques which are triple arms then chibi based deterrents beehive fences farm based deterrents and so on right so we we expect that people should you know be present there and just their presence or just a little bit of noise making that is enough to keep our, keep the elephants out of the uh, agricultural fields so this is a, a traditional technique which are used in that area you have the machans uh, uh, and uh, farmers camp on these uh, machans and uh, you know keep keep uh, watch at night and drive away the elephants community guarding here is a, a group of farmers guarding that agriculture crops the trip alarms which are found very useful so this is an early alert kind of device which uh, you know tells farmers that elephants are in the neighborhood and then uh, once they hear this alarm they can go there and quickly drive away the elephants this is a chili based uh, uh, you know chili smoke uh, thing you can you can see a grass bundle which is filled with uh, chili powder or uh, chili flakes and uh, li lighting this at night and it it burns for about 6 to 7 hours and it helps to keep away elephants so this is a practice session for making this chili bundles beehive fences we have experimented with beehive fences and wherever we have installed beehive fences we have found that elephants just avoid that area and we have found them to be quite successful so you can see some uh, and we use uh, hollow logs instead of depending more on bee boxes we tend to, we use hollow logs and which we found to be cheaper and simpler and we depend upon the local bees colonizing these hollow logs so we call them log hives this is a farmer with his uh, also we use these pots kind of you know terracotta pots so uh, we have found that bees colonize these uh, pots also and uh, so this is some of the success stories that we have seen uh, the crop loss from uh, in one particular village from 2015 all the way to 2020 and we found a steady decrease in the crop loss as more and more farmers practiced uh, these techniques and this is a record of how many uh, farmers were uh, practicing cbcm and particular techniques the so number of villages is mentioned here watch towers number of trip alarms chili deterrents and we so we have a good participation of farmers in uh, in all these uh, techniques that we are uh, uh, implementing there and uh, so this is the uh, number of farmers a progressive increase in number of farmers who were practicing these techniques from year 2009 when we started all the way up to 2018 and we can see almost 600 to 700 farmers are practicing these techniques in this area and this is the uh, percentage of uh, repelling elephants so about when farmers practice these various techniques about you know 50 to 80% of the uh, raids were where they were success, uh, successful repelling but when they did not practice any of these techniques they could only around 15% of the raids uh, elephant attacks or raids were repelled so uh, implementing these techniques is, is really very helpful in uh, keeping the elephants out of the agriculture farms yeah so this is about uh, same success rate in driving our, our uh, elephants uh, out of the paddy fields and as you can see uh, when the uh, you, uh, these deterrent measures are not implemented the uh, Uh, hardly 10 to 15 uh, to 30 percent of the elephants could be uh, pushed away out of this particular village. Similarly, uh, the previous one example was of paddy. This one example is of sugarcane, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, unguarded fields uh, were mostly at, uh, attacked by elephants. But if the fields were guarded, there were up to 60 to 90 percent success in driving away the elephants. so uh, and we uh, published a book also uh, on uh, a, re a review of uh, techniques for uh, crop protection from elephants it's named there's many a way to keep the elephant away it's there on our website and if anyone writes to us the, this uh, you know it's a pdf it's in a pdf form and it can uh, be sent to them by email so you, you just have to make a request on our website and we involved the forest department in a big way the forest department has been very cooperative uh, to us throughout this project from right from the beginning and then we conducted workshops from for, for forest department from various states so from chatisgarh nagaland maharashtra karnataka odisha west bengal and even from nepal 
So uh, the forest department staff came here and got themselves trained in some of the techniques that we are teaching. Also researchers, farmers, plantation owners, many uh, different uh, people from different walks of society came here and learned the techniques that we have been uh, implementing here. So these are some of the snapshots from uh, some of the workshops that we conducted. And they actually got, uh, did hands-on uh, work over there and got them so thoroughly trained in the techniques that uh, we, are, we are implementing. This is uh, Ravi Ellapur, you can see he's in action uh, teaching the people. And uh, down below there is Prachi Mehta with one of the groups uh, doing the workshops. So uh, from 2018, earlier we had been working with individual farmers, but then we, decided, we came to the conclusion that it's we need to institutionalize the method and we need to work with the entire village, not with individual farmers. And from 2018, with the help of the forest department, uh, we uh, started implementing these uh, techniques uh, through the village forest committees, which are the JFM committees, as you know, of the uh, uh, forest department. And the forest departments uh, supported us wholeheartedly in this uh, initiative. You can see in the center is Mr. Uh, Sanjay Mohan, who is the head of forest force of Karnataka. Uh, so, uh, and they, the forest department even funded the VFC uh, initiative there. And uh, so now what happens is the, uh, you know, the, all these uh, techniques are being implemented through the VFC, not by the individual farmers, but through the VFCs. So these are some of the, uh, and all, you know, the, so the, uh, the trip alarm, the chili smoke, the wash towers, all this is done by the entire uh, village forest committees. And that has been really very helpful in institutionalizing the techniques that we are teaching through this project. So these are some of the uh, you know workshops and meetings that we conducted here in Mr. Sanjay Mohan, telling the people uh, and you know uh, exhorting them to participate in this project wholeheartedly. This is a village meeting where we are telling the farmers uh, how these uh, uh, techniques are implemented through the VFCs. Uh, this is the uh, village forest committee, actually, uh, and uh, Mr. Yel, uh, Ravi Elapur is conducting this meeting there. This is a uh, board which is put up about the uh, project uh, and uh, its implementation through the VSCs. And these are the, actually the, some of the uh, uh, distribution which is happening through the VFC. So the funding is coming through the VFC. Forest department funds the VFC. The VFC purchases the material and distributes it to the farmers. So here you can see some torches are being distributed. And some of the tarpaulins to uh, you know to uh, sort of uh, uh, make the wash towers. Uh, these are being distributed uh, through, and also we uh, distributed trip alarms and uh, the even the some of the ch uh, chili material for making the chili smoke the fields. So all this is distributed through the VFCs, and then for three months the farmers use this material and actually implement these techniques. So we created a, actually a whole a circle around the village, you know, a, 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 a circle of protection around the village. And the elephants cannot enter the village for the duration of this exercise. And this has caused a substantial decrease uh, in the elephant uh, raids in this area. So we have project villages which are implemented uh, through the uh, VFCs. Then we have some non-VFC project villages where the farmers themselves said that we, we want to implement the same technique. Even if we don't have VFC in, a, in our village, we want to implement this. And then we are, these are control villages, which uh, were non-project villages, which did not they did not implement any of these techniques. So in the project villages, they were successful in repelling 45% of the elephant raids. In the non-BFC project villages, they were successful. Uh, sorry, uh, the 45% of the elef elephants could enter into the village. In the non-BFC uh, project villages, 78% of the elephants could enter the village. And in the non-project villages, where none of these techniques were implemented. All the uh, elephant raids are successful on each and every occasion, and 100% of the elephants could enter the village. So uh, the uh, the implementation through the VFCs was successful in stopping 55% of the elephant raids, and there was a substantial decrease in the crop the area of crop damage in the project villages. On an average, only 2.73 acres was uh, damaged, while in the non-project villages, around 35. Uh, uh, um, acres was damaged. So this is like almost a 17-fold difference between the project villages where these uh, techniques were implemented through the VFCs and the non-project villages. So these are some of the benefits and I think we are, we are uh, very uh, happy with the results that we have been getting. Now we have been conducting, uh, I'll just run through the remaining part of this presentation. We have been uh, conducting some uh, 
trials with new techniques there sensor based uh, alarms sms system elephant tracker where we are uh, working with the forest department to track the movement of elephants biofencing and some new models of trip alarms so this is an ir based sensor which uh, senses elephant presence when the elephant crosses the, the ir beam and it it gives this kind of alert for the farmers and the farmers they they come to know the elephant presence and rush to the spot and gather the elephants this is a new model of the trip alarm that we have been developing with the help of an electric company so this is a very uh, low cost device but is very effective so whenever elephant comes it sounds an alarm like this and the farmer knows that the elephant is in the area and they can uh, go there together in a group of like you know a uh, 5 to 10 people and drive the elephants and these are the what we call solar blinking lights again a very low cost uh, technique but we have found that it often it helps to keep our elephants from the area so there is just some other development that we are carrying out then other some uh, exercise that we are carrying out in that area so we are trying to estimate population elephants trying to monitor elephant movement and keeping track uh, you know alerting farmers our presence of farmers to sms system so this is the about uh, tracking elephants movement in the area uh we formed an app uh, uh with the help of the forest department and the forest department staff they enter uh, you know they uh, uh, upload the photographs of elephants uh, seen wherever they see and these elephants uh, then photographs are uh, compared to identify individual elephants so these are some of the techniques which we uh, you know the well known uh, uh, way of identifying individual elephants from some of their you know physical features like the uh, shape of the tail the hair on the tail pigmentation uh, ears uh, uh, you know uh, the cut marks on the ears presence of tusks etc dorsal ridge so these are all help to identify individual elephants and uh, also we use camera trap images for identify individual elephants and uh, we have been able to identify around 41 individuals in that area of which 26 were females and 15 were males and there were about four groups of elephants which we identified so far and also we are trying to incentivize elephant conservation by giving some kind of livelihood to the local uh, people there so especially we are running a handicraft uh, program there for, with the help of local women this is a, a siddhi tribal uh, woman in that area so we have to, we have worked with them and helped them to make handicraft which are then sold and so that they can earn some livelihood and all these handicrafts are made on the theme of elephants so they become you know they associate themselves with elephants and uh, you know uh, learn to view elephant as a friendly animal rather than as an enemy so these are some of the uh, handicrafts that we make they are sold on our website if anyone wants to buy them you can always uh, you know visit our website and also this is a trials which we carried out carried out uh, of elephant dung dung paper uh, which we made and um, ma made into some kind of stationery Yes, so yeah, so uh, this is again a uh, uh, photograph of Mr. Uh, Sanjay Mohan, who has been an ardent supporter of our project, and the forest department, I must say, has been a very strong supporter, and we take pride in the fact that we have we have been working so closely with the uh, forest department in North Canada, right? So yes, with that, I come to the uh, end of my presentation. Uh, our team, uh, Dr. Prachi Mehta, myself, Ravi Elapur uh, to the left, and Sharad. so the the team who is working there in the area yeah. and we thank our funding agencies the asian elephant conservation fund of the us fish and wildlife service elephant family foundation the, uh, the uh, us fish and wildlife has, uh, service has supported us our project right from the beginning and elephant uh, family foundation also supported this project karnataka forest department we work very closely with the karnataka forest department and project elephant uh, has of the government of india also been very encouraging so uh, thank you very much uh, i hope uh, uh, the presentation was satisfactory so kushal you can take over from now yes sir thank you sir thank you for the presentation so i shall go with the next part of our uh, event that is conservation talk with mr sharath anchitgiri so it is a small introduction i shall present you just a moment yeah so the next uh, session of the event is conversation with mr sharath anchitgiri and all the other speakers regarding managing human and elephants with the support of forest department and local communities in north canara <coughs> so mr sharath anchitgiri 
He is a program officer. He is a wildlife researcher from Conservation Society. He has done his MSc in Wildlife Conservation Action from Bharti Vidya Peet Institute of Environment Education Research. He has an internship with the WWF in Vulture Project, Raptor Conservation Project. Currently, he is working as program officer with Wildlife Research and Conservation Society in the Elephant Project, North Canada. Uh, sir, I shall hand over the session to you for the next session. Thank you, thank you, Kushal. Thanks a lot. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank uh, friends of friends of elephants for this wonderful opportunity to share our experience, to share our uh, project with the audience. <clears throat> and secondly, <clears throat> that was a really interesting uh, presentation, Jan sir. It actually talked about the overview of the project, what we exactly do in this uh, elephant project in North Canada, and what are the results of it, and <clears throat> what happens exactly in human elephant conflict project that we run in North Canada. So I want to know uh, something more about this project. So I am asking a set of questions to the team members, that is uh, uh, Dr. Prachi Mehta and also, uh, and also Ravi Alapura. So my first question is to Prachi Mehta, you. <clears throat> I have been a fan of this landscape. I love Western Ghats from a childhood. So uh, how did this elephant and people in North Canada began in the first place? Why did you choose North Canada as your study area, ma'am? Okay, uh, <clears throat> thank you, Sharad for this interesting question. And uh, before I say, uh, start uh, answering your question, I'd like to thank Friends of Elephant for giving us this wonderful opportunity on this platform. You know, I'm seeing a very good uh, audience here and that encourages us also, you know, to share our work findings. And Mr. Kulkarni has already uh, shared the platform of our work. Uh, so taking on from there, uh, I'll answer Mr. Sharath's question. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're right that uh, why why not Canada? And many people have asked us this question. Uh, why not other more elephant uh, populated uh, region where there is, uh, you know, more conflict also? Uh, well, one of the reasons is that North Canada elephant is the northern, northernmost range of elephants in the Western Ghats. So this, though it's a small elephant population about about, about 70, to uh, 80 elephants, it's very vital for uh, keeping the elephant range distribution in the Western Ghats. Uh, North can so uh, uh, till it entered Maharashtra, North Karnataka or Northern North Canada actually represented the northernmost population of elephants. And uh, uh, these are elephants which have, were actually connected to the southern elephants, you know, from Malnad region. And as Mr. Kulkarni explained that because of the Lingamakki Dam in 1960s, they have got fragmented, they've got, uh, you know, captured in the northern region. And now these elephants are trying to go from here to Maharashtra, to Goa, to now to Belgaum, to Dharwad. They are trying to expand their range. And uh, as you know, elephants are landscape species. They require this land, or your larger land area. And so one of the reasons is that we need to understand why these elephants are migrating to other areas. And in, in within North Canada, what is it, you know, that they, they keep visiting the crop fields of sugarcane, paddy, a very attractive uh, food right on the doorstep of their uh, house. And so how one can very best manage uh, to retain these elephants and coexist them with the people. So that is that was my response to your question. It's it's always it's always interesting to know the historic uh, migration of elephants. That always astonishes me. Thank you for the answer, ma'am. Yeah. So my uh, next question is to Raviana. Uh, Ravi Alapura is my uh, senior colleague, so I'll be addressing him as Raviana. I hope that is fine. <coughs> so Raviana, हम देखते आ रहे कि आप बहुत साल से काम कर रहे हो इस एनजीओ के साथ इस प्रोजेक्ट में. आप इंडिविजुअली एलिफेंट्स को आइडेंटिफाई कर सकते हो वो मैं जानता हूँ मैं देखा हुआ है शायद एलिफेंट भी आपको आइडेंटिफाई करते होंगे तो इसमें इस प्रोजेक्ट में देखा गया कि ये प्रोजेक्ट में आप कम्युनिटीज uh, को ज्यादा इन्वॉल्व करके काम करते हो तो कम्युनिटीज को इन्वॉल्व करके काम करना वो कितना बेनिफिशियल रहा है इस प्रोजेक्ट के लिए उसके बारे में बताइए एंड ऑल्सो वेन इट कम्स टू ह्यूमन एलिफेंट कंफ्लिक्ट तो फील्ड के क्या क्या प्रॉब्लम हो सकते हैं थोड़ा उसके बारे में बताइए Yeah, thank you, Sharad. 
yeah actually our project title is cbcm community based conflict management so community ka participation hona bahut zaruri hota hai bahut important hai hamare liye kyunki villagers ko pata chalta pata rehta hai ki kaun sa mahine mein elephants aa jata hai aur elephant movements kaise rehta hai aur elephants ka entry points kahan kahan pe hai so is sab ka cheez un, 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 unko achhi tarah se malum rehta hai isliye ye hamara hamara kaam mein bahut helpful hota hai राइट right. कम्युनिटी को इन्वॉल्व करके काम करेंगे तो बहुत आसान हो जाता है काम एंड एज यू सेड वो लोग ज्यादा जानते हैं अपने गांव के बारे में अपने खेत के बारे में और हिस्टोरिक uh, रेट्स के बारे में तो काफी सही पॉइंट है तो माय नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज अगेन टू प्राची मैम सर ने बताया कि सर एक्चुअली एक्सप्लेन दी सक्सेस स्टोरी ऑफ दिस प्रोजेक्ट फ्रॉम हाउ इट बिगैन एंड एवरीथिंग मैम बट आई वॉन्ट यू टू टॉक मोर अबाउट द सक्सेस स्टोरी ऑफ दिस प्रोजेक्ट from uh, the beginning and uh, till now i mean I'll, till now where do you see the success of this project and how 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 is it growing year by year uh, yeah i am very glad <clears throat> glad you asked me this question sharad because we have had a very interesting journey for this project so when we started in 2009 as uh, you know earlier when we used to visit the villages so uh, farmers would just look at us you know when we would say okay, you know we can use chili smoke we can use pala they would say is it a joke like you know they would just look at us with lot of uh, curiosity and they'll say what have you come here for uh, how much money will you give it to us so we said we are not giving you any money we are only going to train you no we don't know we we are not this is all elephants are all they belong to forest department let them take it we are nothing to do with you come you do whatever you want to so with my team like you know ravi was there you were there we have spent nights in the field you know entire night waiting for the elephants to come farmers will be just waiting and watching from far what we are doing and when we actually showed them that this is the way to prevent elephants from coming inside then slowly they would also start saying okay so oh you you four of us are doing it maybe we should also try next time so you know it was a very gradual a very slow process people used to ridicule us they said ke you know once they told me in the village that you know you must be getting paid some you know, like lakhs of rupees to come to our village and drive elephants from our field what do you get out of this they were so curious and so puzzled they said how how is it your business why do you you stay somewhere else why do you come to my village my field and try to prevent crop raid in my way so you know see the entire thinking and mentality that was there in the previous few years have now changed now farmers are coming forward and say please come to our village take this money please get me a torch please get me a trip alarm and they come they are all the time with us while putting the watch tower like as you said you know ravi or mr ravi is there mr sharath is there this they, they work like a family they stay there whole night with them during the crop raiding season and that is the success Now, and and the, as uh, the graph in which uh, mr kulkarni showed you know how progressively you can see from five villages now we have gone over to 100 villages more so from four farmers we started i still remember the names of those four farmers uh, in in kekdal village and now we have gone over to 600 farmers so for a for an outsider it will be a very slow progress it's a steep climb but for us it's it's um, very positive and it's very forthcoming and i'm sure this trend will continue uh, and, and uh, we have got tremendous support from the forest department karnataka forest department all the senior officers all the local officers the field staff and of course all the farmers uh, so you know that is how we are making this progress sir i hope i answered your question yes ma'am yes ma'am for sure actually the night guarding sessions and go uh, staying with the farmers at night that is the best part of this project actually <laughs> and i really really enjoyed yes. uh, and i'm sure uh, that the numbers will increase and ma- many 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 villages will be benefited by this project so my uh, next question is again to raviana <clears throat> we have observed that elephants are very 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 intelligent creatures we we plan so many mitigation measures they find one or the other way to get back into the farms and so 
आप ये जो टेक्निक्स यूज करते हो पुराने टेक्निक्स ट्रेडिशनल जो भी थे उसको और नए टेक्निक्स उसको कैसे मिक्सअप कर रहे हो एंड हाउ यू कम अप विथ न्यू टेक्निक्स क्या क्या करते हो जो आपको हेल्प करता है कि हाथी को बाहर रखने में आपको ये ये सब हेल्प करता है यस शरत ऑलरेडी प्रेजेंटेशन में तो हम बहुत सारा टेक्निक्स के बारे में हमने ऑलरेडी बताया है कुछ चिलिच स्मोक है अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम्स है कुछ टेक्निक्स थ्रू आउट सीजन में काम नहीं करेगा क्योंकि चिली स्मोक हम समर में उसको यूज कर सकते हैं और बारिश में तो हम नहीं कर सकते हैं इसलिए हम वहाँ पे अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम यूज कर रहे हैं और साथ में लॉन्ग टर्म सॉल्यूशन के लिए हम बी बी है फेंसिंग का भी कर रहे हैं और पहले क्या था हमारा फार्मर्स ग्राउंड लेवल हट पे गार्डनिंग करते थे वो एलिफेंट सीजन में वेरी डेंजरस और रिक्क भी था इसलिए हमने फार्मर्स को ये सिखाया कि एक ट्री टावर क्योंकि उनके खेत के आसपास में कोई अगर टॉल ट्री है उसके ऊपर एक मच्छान बना के वो, वो अगर फार्मर उधर गार्डनिंग करता है तो एक तरफ सेफ्टी है सेफ्टी भी है और उसको आसानी से एलिफेंट दिख जाता है कि कहाँ से आ गया है तो वो वहीं से उसको ड्राइव कर सकता है और बहुत सारा बाकी टेक्निक्स भी अलग अलग टेक्निक्स भी है वो भी हम इम्प्लीमेंटेशन कर रहे हैं actually that is very interesting how traditional methods can be combined with the new technology uh, goods yeah. and how that can be used yeah. as a wonderful yeah. mitigation yeah. measure that is really yeah. interesting yeah. from your vendor and things like that sorry okay uh, uh, just a request please everybody kindly mute uh, i think some disturbances in between so it's just the conversation not uh, continuous so i request all the participants to kindly be on mute thank you uh, so actually my next question is to uh, jain sir if we uh, if we go to any interview there will be this one person who will ask this question for sure where do you see yourself in future let's say five years or where do you see yourself so it's a very similar question sir uh, what are the new objectives new things that you want to add to this project in the coming future and uh, where do you see the whole concept of human elephant conflict in north canara region uh, in in the coming future sir yeah thank you sharat this is a uh, very uh, interesting question so uh, like uh, prachi uh, explained you know so our uh, project has also evolved over the uh, period of time from the beginning when we started So, and uh, through this journey we have also learned we have learned from uh, the farmers we have uh, learned from other scientists uh, from uh, other places all over the world from africa especially uh, uh, our uh, you know our team there in the field uh, like ravi and sharad they also come up with solutions which then we found yes oh yes, this works uh, so th this uh, project it's a, it's always it's we have, uh, it has been evolving continuously so uh, so like, where, where do we see ourselves you know few years down the line so I, i think the way that we are looking at it presently is the way uh, how it it is in terms of institutions you know what kind of institutions we are working with so early we earlier like uh, i explained we work with individual farmers right and that gave us a certain measure of success then we thought that it's time to upscale the project and we need to bring it into the community and make uh, bring it into the institutions so that's when we started working with the village forest committees or the vfc so we try to institutionalize the the uh, techniques that we, we have been promoting so now we, uh, our present uh, vision is that earlier the uh, you know uh, earlier the farmers used to look at this as the forest department problem so we brought it into the community we said it's not the forest department problem alone it is the farmers problem also now we want to bring it take it one step further and say it's not only the farmers problem or it's not only the forest department problem but it's the it the society's uh, problem you know so everyone has to contribute the uh, elephant doesn't belong only to the uh, forest department or only to the uh, farmer it belongs to society so we have to view it as a uh, you know as a uh, society so we want to essentially mainstream this thing and we brought, uh, want uh, want to bring other agencies into it along with the forest department so that is how we are looking at it in the future that the whole the government machinery should also participate in this process and help in mitigation of human elephant so that is the direction we plan to move in the future 
That's actually that's actually right, sir. Uh, uh, human elephant conflict is not just a simple problem with just one or two stakeholders. It's a really complex problem with a lot of facets to it. And unless and until each and every stakeholder uh, does his work effectively, the whole system is going to collapse. That that we have seen very effectively these days. That is totally true, sir. So uh, this is kind of my last question to you, sir. And I'm sure uh, this is the question that many people have right now in their minds. Is there anything like a permanent solution to human elephant conflict? <laughs> I think that's you asked the trickiest problem at the end, Sharad. So yeah. So yes. So I think you know as well as we do that there is really no permanent solution to. Uh, uh, the problem that elephants are there, people are there. As long as elephants and people come in close contact with each other, you know, uh, this problem of human elephant conflict is going to be is there going to be person. Uh, it's going to persist, you know. But some so what we have to learn is that yes, this is something that we need to do. Like you know, we take a bath in the morning or we eat food. So like we do that every day. So the as long as the you know the farmer is there, as long as he's, he's growing agricultural crops he has to follow some practices and he has to make it a habit or a regular practice that, you know, this is what I need to do if I'm going to protect my crops from elephants. And, uh, you know, so without enmity or anger against the elephants, finally it's an animal, we are encroaching on its territory. So I need to take some steps to protect myself from uh, damage by elephants or to protect myself and my family. So this is a regular process. So I think that is the only <laughs> way that we have to look at this. Uh, yeah, so that, that is my view about it. Yeah. yeah, so coexist coexistence is the final answer. Coexistence is the key. That's uh, totally Absolutely. right. And I totally agree with agree with you. So uh, this was just a set of questions that I had uh, so that <clears throat> the audience can understand the project better. I'm sure the audience will have much more questions. And uh, that is how we have uh, our next session as a Q&A Q, Q &A session. So I hand it over to the moderator of uh, Q&A session, Sanjay Ajnika, sir. And I thank once again French of Elephants for giving them, giving us this wonderful opportunity and the whole team for answering my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Shara. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope I'm audible to everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, we can hear you. Perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, it is it is really an honor and a privilege to have uh, all the experts. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, the few questions that I myself have because uh, uh, Dr. Prachi has already done an excellent job. She almost answered all the questions. I wouldn't say almost, she answered all the questions. Um, and, and so there is no question left as such, but uh, we as a team, we have, uh, we have basically collated a few of the questions. And uh, I, would, I would just like to go and uh, you know, start with saying the topic for the today's event, we talked about the common conservation issues when it comes to human species as Kushal has introduced and elephant species. So we had a couple of events in the past where we have uh, discussed the two species like, like leopard and elephant, like uh, hawk deer and elephant and so on. So today we are talking about elephant and human. And if I have to uh, put it across, I would like to quote one of the paper where it talks about the emotions. You know? Uh, like a fear, like a disgust, you know, uh, like a surprise or uh, happiness, you know, and those are the emotions associated with the wild animal. Okay, so when it comes to elephants and when it comes to the landscape of, uh, you know, that we are discussing today, you know, and uh, this is specifically to the Dr. Uh, uh, Prachi, you know, you talked about the change in the people's emotions, you know. So when you started, when you started visiting a couple of years ago. And now, is there change in the emotions of people towards elephant, or is it same, or is there any anything that you would like to share around those emotions? Yes. Um, so thank you very much, Sanjay. For uh, that is a very interesting question, and I wanted to share some story also associated with this. So as we uh, discussed, you know, Mr. Kulkarni said that we are trying to build the capacity of the farmers in protecting their own, own crops because see. Each farmer can be independent I and mean, he can take timely action rather than wait for the field stuff to come from somewhere, which is really not humanly possible for them to go and attend to each and every field stuff uh, in each and every farmer where the uh, elephants are visiting. So initially, the farmers are very resistant and they almost sort of scoffed at us and laughed at us for quite some time. You know that, no, this is not our job. 
This is a department job, department cattle. They call it as a department cattle, the elephants, you know. And um, they said, you know, let them take care of it. And luckily, I would, I would say fortunately, in the region where we are working, the community is not very <clears throat> aggressive. I mean, they don't uh, harbor the kind of vengeance towards the elephants. You know, so there is no, not, no retaliatory killings of elephants in this area, which we are very fortunate. So already a uh, very peaceful set of mind of people, you know, we have to divert towards, you know, coming forward and taking control of their own farm using simple, low cost, non-technical methods, like what Ravi said, traditional methods and little bit, you know, tweak to get better results. So yes. initially the resistance which was there, uh, after seeing the success of the neighboring farm, neighboring village, they started coming forward. And when, uh, as Mr. Kulkarni explained, and we started institutionalizing it, when the forest department stepped in, then they, they, it became even more solid. You know, now it's take, like a lot of villages, the entire village, earlier we were working with single, single farmers. And that was very difficult because the farmer A will agree to do it, but farmer B and C will not agree. So the elephant will find their way inside from the B and C farm. Uh, but so the, the, the net effect was uh, very less or almost zero because elephant had their way. Now with the entire village being completely uh, you know, protected, they're sort of immunized against elephants. You know, and another story which I wanted to share is that you know, when we started the handicraft project, you know, the elephant team handicraft, they make beautiful elephant team handicraft, the women there. And uh, the conversations changed, which was very beautiful. You know, so when we were sitting with them, teaching them how to stitch the elephant, uh, you know, keychains or elephant bags, they would say, see, my elephant looks better than yours. You know, and that, that made me feel that, you know, the elephants will be safe here. When they started appreciating the elephants in a different way, because it's giving them some income. And not that everybody is against elephants. You know, in our culture in India, we, we don't ha harbor that. We, we look at elephants as the god. And, you know, it's only when you have certain damage, you feel that resentment. But when the conversations change, when they have an alternative way to look at the elephants, I think things look up for elephants also and for the people. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for that. Uh, my next question to uh, Mr. Uh, Chen. Um, you said one very interesting uh, thing when uh, Sharit has asked you a question about the way forward. And you talked about the institutionalization, you know, where all the stakeholders are coming together and they're, they're playing their own role. Uh, uh, but as a, as a, as a uh, I would say, the head of one uh, uh, organization, how, how difficult it is to uh, keep the ball rolling. Uh, what, what, what do you plan to keep it consistent, uh, your role, and ensuring that you're motivating other stakeholders? Because I could see it's a very, very positive story. It's a very, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely reinforcing, you know, to whatever we keep hearing about the conflict, you know, where people are coming forward, they're, they're basically offering the couple of stories that you all have shared as a team, they're offering the money themselves to have the triple arm. So it's almost going from group level to individual level. So in this context, uh, as a head of organization, how, how will you make sure that all the wheels are running all the time? How will you make sure that it will be consistent? Right. So, uh, yeah, so thank you for this. Uh, so it, it's like you said, it's, it's not easy, you know, I mean, uh, you have to talk to different uh, stakeholders, you have to get their attention. Uh, so what, what I feel is that we have to have this continuous dialogue. You know? So you, you need to talk to people, you need to explain the thing uh, to them, what the situation is. Uh, government officers, especially, see, they have, they have a lot of things on their plate, you know? especially the senior government officers. They have to deal with so many different things and they their attention gets pulled in different directions. But uh, if you can get the ear and if you can, you know, sit across the table and talk to them, we have found that many of them are receptive, very receptive, you know, and they're willing to listen to you and they're willing to take action also. So the main, what is required is that you should start this process. 
so we start we, i mean in this situation kind of situation we see ourselves as a kind of catalyst you know uh, that we have we play this role of talking to various stakeholders and getting action from them and if we can talk uh, talk to people uh, i think people are willing to listen and they will take action so i think uh, we, we can be optimistic about that we should be optimistic about it right yeah i i i, I remember uh, when when i started uh, working for conservation uh, somebody has told me that the one of the common denominator if you need to be in conservation is you need to be uh, brutally optimistic you know whatever <laughs> you you have to be always have this in mind so i totally agree uh, i and uh, next i would like to ask this question to uh, you know to to anybody who would like to take it up because i myself when i visited uh, uh, uttar pradesh uh, and and we we uh, close to the nepal border uh, we have uh, encountered one thing that uh, when there is an empowerment to the farmers uh, after the whole days of hard work and uh, uh, you know uh, it's really difficult for them to uh, take up any task again to uh, guard their farms so uh, that is the one thing that uh, we encountered that uh, uh, they always want to do it but they end up either sleeping or there's always uh, alcohol consumption which deter them from being alert and there is a crop raiding incident and obviously the elephant becomes a bad uh, uh, you know bad guy there so how how how, how is this in 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 uh, in in the landscape that you are studying yeah Pra prachi do you want to answer that uh, yeah i will partly answer uh, and then what you have mentioned is very true you know and it's very relevant because uh, you know we we just think that you know the farmers should do it but it's like a whole day hard work and then sitting up to do uh, uh, crop guarding is not easy you know and definitely they fall off to sleep so that is why uh, you know we decided that uh, you know we gave them an idea that instead of guarding from your house let's make your machan little more comfortable you know where you can sleep because earlier as ravi said you know they would be sleeping on a ground hut which is very dangerous so we we would our team goes to the farm select a sturdy tree you know which is why a tree because it will give them some safety from the approaching elephants and uh, we suggest them a good model of making a house and if you remember then show some tarpaulin you know so we give them that kind of a measure that you put it there and uh, a torch uh, even uh, you know mosquito repellent uh, when we have advised them to put a net so we inculcate all these costs uh, in their uh, when we make the ask them to make the machan and there will be uh, you know the trip alarm bell would be close to the machan so if the elephant comes they don't have to get down the the bell is to alert the the farmer so even if he goes to sleep which he should i mean he would rather you know you can't be just sitting up the whole night uh, the idea is to alert the farmer more than the elephant and but in the return because of this loud sound and the light the elephant also gets scared and the farmer gets alerted to yes something or someone has come to my Uh, so, so we uh, your point is very valid it is very uh, difficult for the farmers but this is the first level of uh, you know early alert for the elephants and a, a simple low cost measure which we are trying to do okay. thank you thank you so much so uh, <clears throat> i'm just trying to uh, flip the coin and go to the other side i'm asking next question to uh, ravi anna and uh, mr sharad Uh, so have you encountered situations where uh, the farmers are benefiting and uh, there is a laziness so how how do you tackle such situations a have you encountered it in the first place and if yes then uh, how how do you tackle such situations uh sorry sir can you repeat the question so if if uh, if let's say a, a, a one a small uh, short term solution Uh, is is working for a, a farmers okay let's say a, a, a hive or or chili fence okay and it it proved to be working for them uh, let's say trip alarm it's working for them uh, have have you noticed over a period of time that they are not being alert they are getting into a lazy mood and if yes so then how the situation is handled out on the field 
yeah we do have come across such situations and uh, as already uh, sir mentioned and ma'am mentioned it's a continuous process it's it's not like uh, hathi uh, it's not like elephant haven't entered once and that is the end of it if not going to return it's not like that it's a continuous process and especially uh, in the regions where rice paddy and uh, sugar cane are grown we need vigilance we need uh, alertness for at least months together so yes. there are a peri- there are periods like uh, for a week they will tra- they will visit this village for the next week they will go to the next village so we do we do tell the farmers about the movement we we keep them updated and uh, yes there are certain examples where laziness has been observed and yeah we we just try to motivate them and keep them keep the youngsters especially youngsters of the villages uh, to to be to be doing the night guarding part and uh, that is how it's, it's been going <clears throat> Okay, all right, all right. So that's very interesting perspective, and it it it. Uh, please allow me to ask a leading question on that. So when you say the youngsters, okay. So when we consider the landscape of uh, North Canada, uh, how's the next generation? Is the next generation also uh, into into farming? They also want to continue uh, uh, taking the efforts to 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 uh, uh, prevent and mitigate the uh, crop raiding. how's their outlook it's actually a very interesting question and also uh, a very interesting observations have been made uh, uh, for example many youngsters are interested in agriculture many youngsters want to continue it maybe or may not be because of the covid effect i don't know many people have returned back to the villages they are trying new methods be fencing for example and uh, solar fences uh, sensor based alarms all these new techniques we have seen young young uh, farmers who are cooperating with us with uh, with the development of new designs of uh, uh, alarms and all so it's it's a very good situation as of now in this landscape sir right right so that's a that's the last question from my end uh, i i i heard that you know uh, uh, the sentiment when you started the work it was always that uh, elephant is uh, 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 it's like a, a you know cattle or a, a cattle forest department and surprisingly uh, that's a sentiment which is uh, being uh, put up by a colonized system and that's what the constitution initially referred the captive elephants as a cattle or a cow you know uh, a domestic cow that's a very interesting thing that i heard it's coming from the villagers also so just to take uh, that point forward when you went and when you started telling them that it's not really forest department problem alone it's also individual uh, issue or it's a societal issue okay? i would like to know uh, maybe with a little bit of uh, details uh i am i am a furious farmer my my entire harvest is gone uh, uh you know uh, it's it's literally gone you know my efforts are gone i am furious i'm i'm angry and helpless and you're coming you're telling me that it's a society problem so how, how it's a, the reaction is very obvious that there is a lot of resistance so how that 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 has been changed over a period of time uh You you already explained this, but more at a very psyche level, how somebody would get convinced when somebody is so angry and agitated? What does that make them convinced that it's more of a society? I need to contribute. Every every stakeholder has to contribute. Prachi, you want to answer that or? Okay, so uh, I'm not. sure if i am the best person i think ravi or sharath might possibly answer it better but my take on it is this that uh, when you know tempers are high it's it's really difficult to uh, deal with people you know so that is probably not the best time to you know uh, give wisdom to the farmer you know so at that time you need to take action and i would say that the forest department's compensation scheme is a good scheme and it does help to assuage the anger of the farmer You know, so i would give uh, you know credit to the forest department there in karnataka certainly that they they do take fairly prompt action uh, when there are cases of crop damage so moving on from there i think what we are trying to do is that you know we uh, you go back to the farmer later and say you know like you had a uh, you know you had a uh, kind of uh, bit of a situation here but i mean that should tell you that you know you don't want this to be repeated again so why don't you 
start practicing some of the techniques that we are uh, telling you so you got compensation but you you the forest department cannot compensate you for uh, uh, for your entire loss so you will so let's not that's that kind of situation come again and uh, you know you take responsibility for protecting your own crops so i think that, that is the message that we try to convey at that point and uh, fortunately i mean where, where the community or the farmers have implemented some of these uh, techniques they find that uh, a few months or a year down the line yes that they have benefited and uh, that hopefully you know helps to convince them that yes we need to continue that uh, your question about uh, you know laziness creeping in is also right yeah, it, it does happen so we have to keep reinforcing this message uh, uh, you know so that's how it goes sure sir. thank you i, I uh, if you don't mind uh, may i ask ravi and my shirat also to contribute like how it has been handled on the field when when you in that situation and you are as as uh, you know uh, one of you has shared that you are almost like a family so how how it has been uh, okay so handle karte hain field mein jab uh, uh, there is a situation of anger or frustration uh we also should understand that uh, it's it's their months of hard work and it's it's shattered in just seconds or let's say minutes so yeah uh, that is quite expect, expected from their side that they are they are getting angry but we also try our best to start uh, to start with the work you know we ourselves go in the field we are in front of the elephants we show them away from the uh, field uh, fields and that is why that is how we gain their trust that we are trying our best to avoid crop loss caused by the elephants we are trying to save the elephants and we are also trying to save the crops uh, it it starts from the field work and as sir mentioned it has a lot of other factors as well we we are in good connection with the forest department we do talk to them about the compensation we uh, uh, we 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 tell them that there has been a huge damage and we we act as a connecting link between farmers and also the forest the forest staff so it's no that that agitation cannot be uh, we cannot reduce it in just a day or so uh, but very uh, very luckily the farmers in our landscape they are also a little open to everything they try to understand the situation and it's not it's been happening from a lot of years so they know that uh, the success story from other another village they are trying to uh, try, trying to adopt those, those methods and uh, mm-hmm. we have seen that for, for for continuously three to four years there there has been no single crop damage case in some of the villages that we are working so the villagers from that uh, villages are really happy so the adjoining villages uh, they will take over that and yeah it's a very slow process that cannot be uh, solved in a single day so th- that's how it works right right uh, i'm tempted to ask this last question uh, it's coming from uh, sharath what he just said uh, he talked about the villagers talking to each other the success story they're sharing with each other so uh, i would like to ask uh, uh, you know uh, mr jayant as well as dr prachi that uh, this this being a success story uh, how how it is is there any plan to take it to the uh, you know uh, uh, a next level uh, collaborating with uh, other uh, non profit trust uh, uh, you know as somebody just asked a question are you in rajasthan so uh, taking this as a as a more like a i would say education to to other landscape i know every landscape is different there are different challenges uh but still is there any common denominator which can be shared across with other conflict landscape and the organizations which are working there are there any efforts uh, you are taking as a team so sharat i just uh, sorry uh, and then i'll just ask you uh, i mean i answer your question and maybe mr kulkarni can elaborate so uh, very rightly you said that you know these each landscapes are different uh, the intensities are very different what we are trying here is community based conflict management where we really have to work on the ground with the local people you know so uh, at present um, you know as we uh, mr kulkarni showed that we did this uh, collaborating with other elephant range states we got tremendous response and this was before covid 19 
and even now they are asking us to come and work in their states and you know try to establish these models so maybe over a period of time uh, after the covid situation and you know traveling becomes a little more uh, you know suitable we might try uh, some corporate companies have also got interested in this this model uh, because we trying to institutionalize it uh, so yes we are expanding in this uh, direction uh, in africa pbca model is very popular you know and that's where we take our lessons from even in certain northeast uh, like you know in assam and all there some ngos are doing excellent work and we have learned from them uh, ncs is doing very good work and so we are trying to get you know inputs from all the good uh, working and trying to get a model where we have inputs from several other ngos several scientists even dr surendra varma has visited our uh, you know landscape and we have been always in touch with ncs for their good work in getting Uh, lessons from them so this way yes we are doing a collaborative work with lot of ngos and other uh, states also and uh, i think mr kulkarni can say about our forthcoming plan uh yes yeah, so uh, yeah uh, so sanjay yes uh, you see we have also learned from other people you know so uh, sometimes we come up with difficult situations uh, at such times we turn to people who have got more experience in this field uh, for example uh, we talk to ncf uh, the team from the hasan side and they have been very helpful to us uh, uh, and gave us some suggestions which we which we actually implemented there so uh, yes uh, ngos do learn from each other they uh, talk to each other uh, so uh, we are open we are willing to uh, you know uh, work with other people collaborate with them give us suggestions so i mean uh, absolutely and that especially that the that book that we published you know this many of it to uh, keep the elephant away so i think that's very useful you know so people if they want to know more about how things are done they can uh, they should actually download that book and you know uh, 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 try to implement some of the measures which we have recommended uh, suggested there but uh, and also it's not only about elephants you know human uh, wildlife conflict is a very widespread problem and some of the things that we have uh, which worked over here in north kenya we have we have tried to implement them uh, with some other species also like wild boar like nilga etc with partial success but i think we need to do more work there so i mean think some of the learnings over here can be implemented in other areas as well that's what sure sure thank you so much thank you and that that's uh, that's the end of the um, uh, question and answer session i would uh, i would uh, i would hand it over to kushal to take it forward and thank you so much for uh, such an interactive uh, session thank you so much Okay. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you, Sanjay. It was such a very interactive uh, session we had so far. So, starting with Mr. Uh, Jayant sir, excellent presentation with the historical background of all the isolated elephants of the North Kenya district and the conflict, and even the excellent video on how intelligent these elephants are, though they are so magnificent, so huge, but they have such a big. intelligence which we always tend to overlook over and it's a example how they are in very good at problem solving so whatever challenges thrown at them they just come out with a very very interesting solutions for each so it's always an evolving one and i would uh, uh, thank jain sir for this excellent presentation and talking about prachima i'm completely with you i agree when people say it's your elephant you take them ee do nimma anegalu nee tagondo vi it's like something common in some of the other places where there is elephant conflict but i also know that it's a very good uh, mentality of the people who are always in conflict with the elephant that they say it's our elephant and mm -hmm. relating to such a state from your elephant you take back and coming to a conclusion that it's our elephant it's such a wonderful job it may be a psychologically and economically a large burden for the farmers but it's an excellent job ma'am i have to thank all the entire team for that and for the all the words and information from your end and thank you for that so then other two speakers yes though they are in field i understand that they are not in the city limits but they are in field i really really appreciate their effort to come online to connect with us and educate all the viewers and i have to tell you this that we have a very wide vibrant viewership be it a student or a researcher to a, a forest department staff or a commoner we had a very brilliant and vibrant audience today so on behalf of the entire team and i also need to thank mr rohit for 
preparing such a very good uh, poster for the event so, and all the other volunteers of uh, friends of elephant we went who worked on and off the work line that we direct or indirect so on behalf of the entire friends of people in elephant even i would like to thank all the speakers and all the audience i would also like to give you a small reminder that all this video will be available on our facebook page so you can we really go back and watch these and even the previous editions of our friends of elephant even and i hope this really enriched all your knowledge on elephant and humans their human perspective their action towards the elephant and conservation and for with this i would uh, bid you all a very good night for today and we hope we will all again gather together for the next month session in the month of february thank you all have a good night and stay healthy thank you all thank you very much thank you very much yeah yeah thank you thank you kushal thank you friends of elephants uh, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. Good night. Bye-bye.